Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about the pH scale. So what is the pH scale and how does it work? Well it says right here that the pH scale is a logarithmic number scale used to specify the acidity or basicity, sometimes referred to as alkalinity, of aqueous solutions. And so the pH scale is a scale that we use to specify how acidic or basic or alkaline a solution is. And the pH scale is based on the molar concentrations of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions that are in aqueous solutions. So essentially the pH scale is a logarithmic scale that is based on the concentrations of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions expressed in uh, moles per liter or molar concentrations. And so if we take a look at this pH scale right here, we see that the pH scale ranges from 0 to 14 and anything between 0 and 7 on our pH scale is going to be an acid and anything between 7 and 14 on our pH scale is going to be a base. And so if we take a look at some examples, we have battery acid or sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid with a pH of 0. And so uh, those are going to be acidic in nature. Lemon juice has a pH of 2. That's going to be acidic in nature. If we take a look at water, water is going to have a pH of approximately 7. And... Uh, has the same amount of hydronium ions as hydroxide ions in it and so it is completely neutral and everything over here from 7 to 14 is going to be a base we have seawater with a pH of 7.8 and uh, ammonia with a pH of 11 and liquid drain cleaner with a pH of 14 and so if we're taking a look at this pH scale what we see here is that as we move from 7 to 0 on our pH scale the acidity increases in other words the concentration of hydronium ions in the solution is going to increase and if we work from 7 to 14 on our pH scale the solution becomes more alkaline or basic and so what does that mean well if we take a look at the concentration of hydroxide ions in the solution as we move from 7 to 14 it's going to increase so how much are these things going to increase or decrease well, let's take a look. It says right here that the pH scale is logarithmic. So it's based on powers of 10. And so every step we take on the pH scale is a power of 10. And so if we take a look here at a pH of 1 compared to, say, a pH of 3, a pH of 1 compared to a pH of 3 is going to have 10 times 10, which is 100 times more hydronium ions compared to a pH of 3. It's 100 times stronger. Also, if we take a look over here and compare a pH of 9 to a pH of, say, 12, a pH of 12 is going to have about 1,000 times, 10 times 10 times 10 times more hydroxide ions floating around in that solution and is therefore going to be about a thousand times stronger a pH of 12 compared to a pH of 9. And so understand that concept that as we move from 7 to 0 on our pH scale the acidity increases and the concentration of uh, hydronium ions in that solution is also going to start to increase exponentially and as we move from 7 to 14 on our pH scale the alkalinity or basicity of that solution is also going to increase exponentially as we start to have more and more uh, or a higher and higher concentration of hydroxide ions. And so let's take a look at how we can use the pH scale to make certain determinations of different acidic and basic solutions. And so let's use this pH scale here to make some determinations about the acidity or basicity of different aqueous solutions. And so if we take a look here, we're asked to compare a solution with a pH of 2 to a pH of 4. It says a solution with a pH of 2 has blank times more concentration of hydronium ions than a solution with a pH of 4. So if we take a look here at our pH scale, as we move from 7 to 0, the solution becomes more acidic. So a pH of 2 is definitely more acidic than a pH of 4, but just how much? Remember that the pH scale is logarithmic. It's exponential. And so if we take a look here, 
we are two steps away. A pH of 2 is two steps away on our scale compared to a pH of 4. So if the pH scale is based on powers of 10 and every step represents a power of 10, then a pH of 2 is two steps away from a pH of 4, and so 10 to the 2 is going to equal 100. So a solution that has a pH of 2 has 100 times more, con more the concentration of hydronium ions than a solution with the pH of 4. Let's take a look at this one. We want to compare a solution with the pH of 9 to a pH of 13. And so if we're taking a look at a pH of 9 and comparing it to a pH of 13, we can see it's 1, 2, 3, 4 steps away. So 10 to the 4th is going to equal 10,000 times. So let's take a look. A solution with the pH of 9 has 10,000 times less the concentration of hydroxide ions than a solution with a pH of 13. Let's take a look at this last one. We are asked to compare a solution with a pH of 6 to a pH of 1. So if we take a look here and compare a solution that has a pH of 6 and compare it to a solution that has a pH of 1, a pH of 6 is less acidic than a pH of 1, but just how much? We can see that a pH of 6 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps away. So 10 to the 5th is going to equal 100,000. 100,000 times less. The concentration of hydronium ions than a solution with a pH of 1. All right, so now that you understand the pH scale, let's take a look at a little simulation that kind of ties all these concepts together. And so what we're looking at is a simulation complements of FET simulations from the University of Colorado. I highly recommend that you check out their website and take a look at some of their simulations. They're actually very, very helpful and very, very cool. And so if we're taking a look on a microscopic, or I'm sorry, on a macroscopic level, that is to say what we can see with the naked eye, let's take a look. Let's fill this beaker up or container up with some water here. So we're gonna fill this up with water and we're going to go ahead and drop our pH probe in here and take a look at what the pH of this water is. We can see that it has a pH of 7. It is completely neutral, right? And so it's going to have the same amount of hydronium ions as it does hydroxide ions. It's going to have the same concentration. But let's go ahead and start adding something to this. Let's go ahead and add battery acid, for example. Let's add battery acid, and we can see that the pH of this battery acid is 1.0. And if we start to add water to this, we're going to dilute this solution. And so the pH is going to increase. It's going to become uh, uh, less concentrated with hydronium ions. It's become diluted, right? And so understand that concept. And if we start to drain water out of here, the concentration is not going to change. Therefore, the pH is not going to change either. And so understand that concept as to what's happening on a macroscopic level when we start dealing with pH of uh, different solutions. But let's take a look now at what's taking place on a microscopic or molecular level when we're dealing with aqueous solutions and the pH scale. And so let's take a look at what is happening on a molecular level or on a microscopic level inside a little container or beaker. And so what we're going to do is we're going to fill this container up with some water here. And so as we add some water, We'll fill it up three quarters of the way and then we'll stop. We'll notice that the hydroxide ion concentration equals the hydronium ion concentration. They both equal 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. And so our container of water here has the same amount or concentration of hydronium as it does hydroxide. And that is why the pH of this water here is 7. And if we take a look at the actual molecule count, well, we can see that we have this many molecules of water, 2.91 times 10 to the 25th, and we also have the same amount of hydronium ions as we do hydroxide ions that are floating around in here. And so that's what makes the pH of this solution, in this case water, completely neutral. So understand that concept where uh, if we have some water, the concentration of hydronium ions is going to equal the concentration of hydroxide ions, and it's going to have a pH of seven which is completely neutral so let's go ahead and drain this water out here let's go ahead and drain this water out 
and add a different substance. And so we're draining the water out. And instead of water now, we're going to go ahead and add a, a strong acid like battery acid. So we're going to add some battery acid here. In fact, let's add a little bit more. And if we take a look at this battery acid here, battery acid has a pH of 1. So what does that mean? Well, if we take a look, the concentration of hydronium ions is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 1. And the concentration of Hydroxide ions is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 13. So what does that mean? Well, this means there's about a trillion times more hydronium ions that are floating around in this water right here than there are hydroxide ions. And so if we take a look at the actual molecule count and not the concentration, here's our count of water molecules that are floating around in here. Here is our count of hydroxide ions that are floating around in here. And you can see all the... Uh, the red dots or red molecules of hydroxide and then if we take a look the hydronium ions is 4.66 times 10 to the 22nd and so we have what i uh, what what amounts to about a trillion times more hydronium ions that are floating around in here than hydroxide ions and so understand that concept understand that concept that uh, in strong acid solutions, you're going to have um, a, a much higher concentration of hydronium compared to hydroxide. And so let's go ahead and drain this out here. And then let's go ahead and add a, uh, a weak acid. Let's add a weak acid or a solution that has a relatively higher pH compared to a battery acid. And let's go ahead and add some coffee. And if so, we add some coffee here. We can see here that in the coffee, we have a pH of 5.00. And so what does that mean? Well, that means we have this concentration of hydronium ions and this concentration of hydroxide ions. And so there's about 10,000 times more hydronium ions floating around in this water compared to hydroxide ions. And that's going to give us a pH of 5. And so let's drain this out again. And let's start taking a look at some bases. So let's take a look at a strong base like drain cleaner. And if we take a look at our drain cleaner, we'll fill this up a little bit more. We can see that the pH of this is 13. But what does that mean? Well, this means that there are uh, or that there is a concentration equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 1 moles per liter of hydroxide that is floating around in here. So we have way more hydroxide now than we do hydronium, right? Than we do the hydronium here. And so we have a pH of 13, right? In fact, there's about a trillion times more hydroxide that is floating around in here than there is hydronium. And so understand that concept. And if we take a look on a uh, 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 actual molecule count. We have this many water molecules floating around in here. We have this many hydronium ions floating around in here, but we have this many hydroxide ions that are floating around in this water or this aqueous solution right here. So there's about a trillion times more hydroxide than there is hydronium. And if we take a look at a pH slightly less than 13, like say hand soap, hand soap is going to be a, a, a weak base. And if we fill this up a little bit more, we can see that the hydroxide ion concentration here is going to be equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth. And the hydronium ion concentration is going to be equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative tenth. And so if we're comparing these two, there's about a million times more hydroxide ions that are floating around in this solution here than there are hydronium ions. And as a result, the pH is basic. It has a pH of 10.0. And if we take a look at the molecule count, we can see this right here. Here's the water molecule count. Here is the hydroxide uh, ion count. And here is the hydronium ion count. And we can see that there's about a million times more Hydro, uh, hydroxide ions floating around in this solution compared to hydronium ions. So understand the pH scale, understand how it works. And uh, if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner. That's, that's going to subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.